Hello and welcome to this week's programme, where we review the Air Inter Cork Airport Munster Oaks from Kilcoan Park in Waterford. A look at the ongoing developments of Newbridge Stadium. We preview next week's Puppy Derby. And in our competition, we're giving away a signed number cloth worn by this year's Derby winner, Cool Performance. But first, Michael Fortune traces the extraordinary career of that very dog. In the first programme in the series, we travelled down to Nocknagoshill in County Kerry to talk to Michael Walsh, the breeder of the 2000 Irish Derby winner Judicial Pride. Well, two weeks later, we're back in County Kerry, in Abbey Dorney with Pat Keane. He has bred the 2001 Derby winner, Cool Performance. Pat, can you trace us back to the start of the Cool Performance story? Where did you get Pony Nikita? I saw pups advertised by Lizzie Maher of Tullis, and I like the breed, and that's the great mini line. And uh, I purchased the pup. And I got uh, Mrs. Gleason, Eileen Gleason, and Mick Gleason to go out to her kennels, and Eileen selected the pup. We reared her here and prepared her for racing. We had a few trials in school and tracks, and uh, a few local school and track, and she showed exceptional pace. But we rushed a bit, and she had a few injuries. And when she after coming back from the injuries, she uh, came in season, and I decided to meet her so to a Mustang Jack in Sean Burke's kennels in Clonmel. She had a litter of pups, two dogs, and uh, it was about four bitches in it. Uh, when he was a pup, um, Mick Lee was a great friend of mine, and we have Spiral and Nikita belong to him here as well. So he, Mick used to bring him down here and gallop him and that. So we we. We helped him as much as we could, galloping for the Puppy Derby, and he won. Uh, he won the Puppy Derby the fastest time ever, uh, twenty-eight fifty on the old track. And uh, he, I advised Patsy maybe to, to buy a share in him. And um, when he took him over, then he got injured, and he got injured a second time. So they just retired him. And uh, you know, I'm I'm happy for for Patsy. And I'm happy for Mick Leeson because you know they've been very patient with the dog, and they were happy to keep him at stud, but. Um, we decided to bring him back to, to, to um, help his stud career. Cool performance, battling back to take it up on the third bend. Drew Vieri runs into them. Number one, Dale Inferno, launching his challenge. But up to set, it's cool performance. Here comes Lake Lecho, but just too late. And cool performance holds up Lake Lecho by a rapidly diminishing head. What was the feeling like just as the dog crossed the line and you heard the result and knew you had trained the derby winner? It was just incredible. You know, I mean, I just went, I probably lost the, the, the use of myself, really. I mean, I ended up out on the track and I I, I wanted to get all the, the, the Tipperary crowd in because they, they had great support there on the night, you know. After the All-Ireland, there was, uh, there was about 50 or 60 youngsters, all friends of, of our own boys, and um, they gave us great support. So I wanted to get them on the track with the Tipperary flags. And so we, we managed to get most of them in there, but uh, it was fantastic, yeah. This dog is very focused. And once he was on the bunny, that was it. I knew he could do it. Coming up the home straight, I still wasn't sure. I thought he might have been beaten. But I was very pleased the way he ran. Cool performance would compare very favourably with any other winner we've ever had. They're all different. And each dog has his own personality and, you know, his own talents. And I think cool performance had a lot more talent than most. Uh, it's very easy to come down from the high. Um, yeah, we have. We had a fantastic weekend. Um, the problem is Monday morning here we had we had 18 blood tests to do, and uh, so I had to have my wits about me. And when you have other people's bitches in the yard, um, as you know, we're, we're mainly a stud kennel here, and uh, we have responsibility for all these bitches, so they have to be made at the right day. And uh, so we had, apart from the three or four hundred phone calls, uh, we managed to get a little bit of work done as well. We've got a great team. Uh, my son Stephen and Leone O'Mara and Jerry Manson especially who's who's been super help with the dogs since we started and uh, the last three weeks then Steve, Kevin and Carl have, have come from Australia so we'd like to thank all those 
and uh, especially Mickey Knight and Gleeson and Patsy Bourne, the co-owners, who have uh, been behind us all the way. Now that you've won the derby, what's the ambition now? Well, I'm hoping to set up a racing operation here with, with the stud kennel. Before this, I, all I've had is, is uh, my own dogs training a few, breeding a few litters. Um, so from next week on, we're setting up a racing uh, kennel and training kennel. I've got a, a guy from Australia, a friend of mine, Steve Kavanagh. Um, he's the owner of Smooth Rumble, one of my stud dogs. And uh, he has agreed to come for a year to train and just take over the training side. Cool performance. I'd heard about him, obviously, before I came over. Uh, he he broke the record the first week I was here. We went down. He broke the record at Shelburne. And he'd already broken the sprint before that, and I just just so impressed by the dog. Um, we hear about them all in Australia, but we don't don't get to see them firsthand go through and win a big race like that. It was just sensational. I've never seen anything like that before ever at a, at a dog track. The, the atmosphere there was just incredible. And the roar and everything was great. Obviously, you have a special name reserved for one of his pups. What will that name be? We have a special name reserved for one of his pups. And it was a headline that appeared on the paper on the Cork Examiner last Thursday. The final performance. No doubt, I will call a pup final performance. Last Saturday, the Munster Oaks was held at Kilkern Park in Waterford. Bluebell Queen was fancied, but did she deliver the goods? Here's Brian Gleeson. Thanks, Tracy, and welcome to Waterford Greyhound Stadium for the final of the Air Inter Cork Airport Munster Oaks. £5,000 for the winner, and what a final we have in prospect. The favourite is Trap 2, Dilrock Dot at 5-2. to two. It's 3-1, to one, then Trap 1. Time for chips, also 3-1, to one, Trap 6. A Bluebell Queen, it's 6-1, to one, then You Said So, Autumn Smashed, and Hannah's Fancy. And now the runners for the Arienta Cork Airport Munster Oaks final. In trap one we have time for chips. Trained by Chris Hulan and owned by Liam Harton from Oma. She's a daughter of Sun Picture and Tree in his pride. In two you see Dilrock Dot. This strong running daughter of Staplers Joe and Brown Dot is owned and trained by Alan Carroll from County Wexford. In three we have the early paced You Said So. Trained by Michael O'Donovan and owned by Master Jay Dilger from County Limerick. She's a daughter of Larkill Joe and Three Climber. In four, another early pace performer, Autumn Smashed. Owned and trained by the Autumn Kennel Syndicate from County Waterford, she's the daughter of Top Honcho and Fly Smasher. In five, you see Hannah's Fancy, the strong staying bitch, is a daughter of Vintage Prince and Sister Jack. She's owned and trained by Brendan Cullimore from Wexford. And finally, in trap six, Bluebell Queen. Trained by Lara Mason in Dundrum and owned by Anne Tracy from Dublin. She's the daughter of Lara Kill Joe and Mary Bluebell. The final of the 2001 Arianta Cork Airport Monster Oaks. £5,000 in prize money. Trap one time for chips. Two Dilrock Dot. Three you said so. Four Autumn Smashed. Five Hannah's Fancy. And six is Bluebell Queen. Here we go. And out time for chips on the inside. Going at number three you said so. Into the first spin. The outside Bluebell Queen. That much between them. Round the, round the first spin. It's you said so. From in second place Bluebell Queen. You said so. Here comes Bluebell Queen on the outside. You said so. From Bluebell Queen. View Blue. Bluebell Queen into the second last spin. It's Bluebell Queen from you said so. Flying on the outside. We have uh, Hannah's Fancy. Bluebell Queen. Here comes you said so. But it's Bluebell Queen wins the Monster Oaks. And the result of the final of the area into Cork Airport Monster Oaks. In first place, Bluebell Queen in 28.76. In second, fast finishing Hannah's Fancy. And in third, you said so. Great scenes here in the presentation area for the area at the Cork Airport Monster Oaks. With me, the trainer, uh, Larry Mason. Larry, she's a real, real good bitch. She is a topper. She is one of the best in the yard, and she's a pleasure to, to do. She came out this evening. She came out tonight. Prayers and everything we got. Rosaries and all that. <laughs> When you came, when you, when you highlighted this uh, this stake for the bitch in Dublin, was it always was it was the Monster Oaks always on on, on the on the cards? Well, yes, because she wasn't. We didn't think she was good enough for the big one in Dublin, and uh, we come down here. The track suited her, and I I haven't been here for years. And when I saw the track, I said, "This is her track." She didn't come out in the semi final, but she didn't come out in the semi final, but she showed lovely foot, and she ran around them. Trap six is a box and. She done the same in Shelburne. She ever uh, trap six. She run her. She run around them, and I think she's one for the paddock anyway. The breeding paddock. Anyway. 
She's a very valuable bitch now. And turning to the owner, and Tracy, you must be absolutely delighted. A proud lady this evening. I just can't believe it. I really can't believe it. it we just came down hoping. And she's just brilliant. Tell me about Bluebell Queen. How did you get her? We bought her when she was about 12 months old. And Larry has been looking after her for us ever since. And he's just done a brilliant job with her. I just can't say enough about Larry Mason. He's been brilliant with her. What is it like to own a, a, a bitch that has won a prestigious prize like the Monster Oaks? It must be really, really special. It's unbelievable. I mean, we just never thought we'd be standing here in this position. It's just fantastic. Newly crowned Miss Ireland 2001. What was it? A month next Tuesday? Yeah, it's a month on Tuesday. Many, many congratulations, Thanks of course. Thank you very much. Originally from Go Through near Yall in East Cork. It was a wonderful achievement. Yeah, I yeah, am. It's great being from such a small place. Everybody's delighted with me because everybody knows me as well. So it's a great benefit to the community. Like. It's your first evening coming Greyhound racing. It is. I was invited down um, a few days ago and I said I'd never been before, so I'd come down to try it out. It's brilliant. I love it. What do you like about going Greyhound racing? Well, I was surprised to see such a young following here because um, I thought it'd be mostly the older generation, but there's loads of people my own age here as well. And it's good fun as well, you know. I placed my first bet now as well this evening. Join us in part two for our competition, news from Newbridge and in Fortune's news and tips. It's competition time now and last week's winner was Deirdre Clancy from Glasnevin in Dublin. And the question was, who trained the winner of last Saturday's Irish Greyhound Derby? And of course the answer was Sean Burke. Deirdre wins a night out for two at Shelburne Park and will be featuring our winners on their night out in our programme in the next few weeks. So the winner of this week's competition will receive Cool Performance's winning number cloth signed by his trainer Sean Burke and let's have a look at the question and that is who finished second in this year's paddypower.com Irish Greyhound Derby. Call us from the Republic of Ireland, the number is 1550 92 73 73. From Northern Ireland and the UK it's 0901 063 0642. Bridge Greyhound Track closed its gates earlier this year for a complete refurbishment. Since opening in the 40s, it's been a regular for local followers of the sport and beyond. We asked director Joe Kearns how necessary it was to upgrade the venue. It was very important because uh, modern day facilities require that you have the best of everything and uh, as you know, all the other tracks have been more or less upgraded and uh, we wanted to keep pace and if not, go ahead of the other tracks. So we have definitely improved and we think we have learned from the other people's mistakes. Well, of course, uh, likes of Newbridge and Provincial Tracks, they attract a different uh, class of Greyhound. Uh, I suppose the Dublin Tracks, if you go to Shelburne Park, you're taking on the whole country. Whereas if you come to Newbridge, well, you're only taking on the surrounding counties, more or less. That's unless there's a real major event on. So it gives everybody a fair chance of collecting prize money. After all, you have to think of all the owners that don't have the top class Greyhounds. Uh, they have to be catered for as well. We're really going out of our way to attract a new kind of attendance. We're going to aim for the younger generation that have never been to Greyhound Racing before. Uh, we, we know from samples we've done that lots of people from around Newbridge and that have gone to Shelburne and have liked what they've seen. So if we can provide it on their own doorstep, so much the better. One of the major forces behind the development is Dermot Cox, a well-known figure in the community. Nothing is being spared in the redevelopment of this local landmark that is expected to welcome the crowds back next month. We asked Dermot what it is that attracts those crowds. It's, it's constant action. You race every 15 minutes. Um, younger people nowadays like better facilities. They want um, good facilities. They want to be warm. They don't want to be cold. We stood out in the winter nights here freezing to death. And uh, the old diehards would still do it, but the new generation, I think, would like their comforts and so many other sports offer such good facilities, we, we, we just have to raise our game up to that. We have got tremendous support 
to upgrade this track and we're very lucky to have uh, Minister Joe Walsh on board and indeed our Minister for Finance, Charlie McGreevy, who has been, board men have been excellent about the horse racing in the ground industry. So uh, we got wonderful encouragement from board and gone. Pascal Tiger, the top class man, and uh, no better than his chief executive, Michael Field, who gave us tremendous encouragement and support. And uh, we found him excellent to work with, and he's really helped us out in every way and encouraged us. You do need a little bit of encouragement to not do a thing like this, so he was excellent. Like that. The problem that young greyhounds will experience with the traps is that they're dealing with something completely new to them. By and large, the majority of greyhounds, uh, when they come to the track, will not have experienced the whole trapping system. And there can be difficulties in the beginning. But by and large, these will be overcome after one or two visits to the track. Now in the beginning, dogs can twist and turn, but eventually uh, they will settle and given time in the traps, uh, they'll eventually come to the front and should bomb away. The problem uh, will occur at times in that a greyhound may stay in traps even in a race. If this does happen, the race will continue, providing that that dog does not actually uh, turn back and meet the other dogs, thereby interfering with the results of the race. Now unfortunately, from the punter's point of view, if a dog does turn in traps and if it doesn't cause any interference in the result of the race, well basically the result will stand and uh, they will have backed the loser. Next Friday is the final of the BCR Press Puppy Derby. We take a look now at the semis held last Friday at Harold's Cross. Here's Ian Fortune. Well, I'm here with Paddy Ryan, General Manager of Shelburne Park, and one of the stewards here at Harold's Cross. Paddy, what do you think is the importance of the Puppy Derby? The uh, Puppy Derby is the most important event in the Irish Greyhound calendar. It gives you an idea of the Cups for the future, who will go on to win major events and win lots of prize money. The BCR Press uh, Puppy Derby is a brilliant event this year. Top class Greyhounds running, and we look forward to seeing those Greyhounds run over the next couple of years. As like who performance last week did, he won the Puppy Derby two years ago and went on to much greater things. So... It's a top class event and we look forward to the Greyhounds performing from then on. In trap number one we have Glass Orchid, owned and trained by the legendary Pat Dalton down in Golden. She's the daughter of Ron Oakey and Wise Flyer. In two is Upper Grange Pears, owned and trained by Liam Crowdle from Kilkenny. He's the son of Asterton Eulogy and Faraway Whisper. In trap three, the favourite Rutland Budgie, trained by Paul Hennessy down in Garen, owned by the Arasharish Syndicate from Kilkenny. And he's a son of Come On Ranger and Yasmin Jade. In four, the staying type, Aranoch Lance, son of trade official and Aranoch girl, he's owned and trained by Nola Mara from Offaly. In five, the early pace Sparta Rolo, owned and trained by Philip Goff and John Fitzgerald, who've had such luck this year with making Mary and the likes of Sparta Tom, and he's a son of Roan Oakey and Sparta Glory. And finally, in trap number six, the very fast finishing Mount Taylor Walk, owned and trained by Francis O'Donnell from Tipperary, he's a son of Boyne Walk and the other top. The bell just sounded and the hair is now on its way. In trap order they are in one, Glass Orchid. In two, Upper Grange Pez. In three, the hot favourite Rutland Budgie. In trap number four, Aaron Uplands. In five, Spartarolo. And in trap number six, Mount Taylor Walk. Just watch this fellow coming home. Hair up behind the traps now. And away they go and fast in the stride in the middle is number four. Aaron Uplands now on the outside, number five, Spartarolo. The favourites back in fourth place could be in trouble. Going on the first two corners now in number five, Spartarolo. He's a couple of lengths clear of Aaron Uplands in second place. Back in third place, Mount Taylor Walk. Watch this fellow finishing. Rutland Budgie back in fourth place now. But now Spartarolo being challenged on the inside by number four, Aaron Uplands. Mount Taylor Walk runs into the back of the look of Rutland Budgie. He's flying. Coming around the final two corners. And it's still number four, Aaron Uplands. Now on the outside, Mount Taylor Walk and Rutland Budgie. On the inside, number one, Glass Orchid, comes line, number six, Mount Taylor Walk has won it. Well, the results of the opening semi-final of the 2001 BCR Press Puppy Derby. The winner, Mount Taylor Walk, in second place, Glass Orchid, and in third, Aaron Lance, the winning time, 28-82. Well, Matt O'Donnell, one of the legends of the game, you were a finalist in the Puppy Derby with Mount Taylor Walk. How did you think he ran tonight? I thought he ran very well, like for, for a slow beginner. He stopped the better, and... and he, I thought he would last a good bit of ground at the top bend, but he comes home very strong and he's still there. 
And how do you think the final will go from? I think he'll have a hell of a chance in the final because I think the five dog will be moving in rapid going into the first bend and he's going to leave him a lot of room. And if there's any little hustle or bustle in it, he must be in the shake off. Number one, we see Priceless Rebel, trained by Paul Hennessy down in Garen and owned by Kathleen Murphy from the Cayman Islands. He's the son of Staplers Joe and Tina's Beauty. In trap number two, the staying type, Eva Starr, trained and owned by Desmond Foran from Dublin. He's the son of Fly Prince and Follow the Star. In trap number three, the hugely pacey Jet Spray, trained by Dennis Carroll and owned by Patrick Shine from County Limerick. He's a son of Kilmesson Jet and Roving Mindy. Well, there we see trap number four, the hugely pacey bitch, Airport Express, trained by the legendary Pat Dalton and owned by Pat's son, Michael, down in County Tipperary. She's the daughter of Ron Oakey and March Queen. In trap number five, we have Judicial Rebel, trained by Michael O'Donovan down in Tipperary Town and owned by Pat Daly from Cork. He's a son of Staplers Joe and Fault the Sandra. And finally, in trap six, the English challenger, Reactabon Jet, trained by Paul Young of Droopy's Vieri fame. He's owned by the Miles family and Alan Hurry from England, and he's a son of El Premier and Droopy's Kylie. The hair just sounded and the dogs in trap order are in one. Priceless Rebel. In two, the stayer, Eva Starr. In trap three, the pacey Jet Spray. In trap four, the hugely fast Airport Express. In trap number five, the favourite, Judicial Rebel. In trap six, Reactive on Jet. Here up beyond the traps and away they go. And fast in the stride in the middle is number four, Airport Express. This race could be over, folks. In second place is Judicial Rebel. Going around the first two corners and it's number four, Airport Express. She's a length and a half clear of number five, Judicial Rebel. Back in third place, Priceless Rebel. Going down the back straight and look at Airport Express stretching. Number five, Judicial Rebel. Sticking with her well. Back in third place, Priceless Rebel. But coming to the third corner and Airport Express is in front. She's not going to be caught from here, I can tell you. In second place, Judicial Rebel. And back in third, Prices Rebel. Coming to the line, look at Airport Express. Stretching clear. She wins it. And the result of the second semi final of the 2001 BCR Press Puppy Derby. In first place, Airport Express with 28 15, a new track record and national record for 525 yards. In second, Judicial Rebel. And in third, Prices Rebel. There you see the trap draw being made by Pat Riley of the BCR Press. Also present is Paddy Ryan, general manager of Sheldon Park, Eamon Mackey, the racing manager here at Harold's Cross, Pat O'Donovan, the commercial manager of Harold's Cross, and Cahill Curley, one of the directors of Harold's Cross and a member of Bordnagon. And the trap draw for the final of the 2001 BCR Press Puppy Derby is as follows. In trap number one, Priceless Rebel. In trap two, the hugely pacey Rutland Budgie. In three, the bitch that set the national record in semi-final, Airport Express. In four, Aaron Up Lance. In trap number five, Judicial Rebel. And in trap six, the fast finishing Mount Taylor Walk. Leading bookmaker Teddy Hegarty gives his opinion on the puppy most likely to please the punters in the final. Uh, the first semi final was a very messy race, and it was very hard to judge. You know, Rutland Budgie were probably lucky to get to the final, but he's there now. He still has a trap enough drawn to final. He's drawn trap two in the final, and I don't think he's well drawn in two. And the second semi final, well, Airman Air especially did everything right. He bombed out. She even had a horrible draw in the final because Rutland moves out from two, so she also has a tricky draw in the final. And the dog I like in it perhaps is Judicial Rebel. Uh, he's an inside seed, but he might be that badly drawn when he's drawn in five, because four will be moving in and he may get a run to the bend, and if he hits the front, he should win it. But it's wide open, I think. I know you haven't probably done your market for the final yet, but what way do you think it'll go? Uh, maybe Rutland Budgie, Airmont, Airport might be favourite, but I think Judicial won't be a big prize. I'll be siding with Judicial on the final. Well, one of the main talking points this week was that of Sonic Flight, who was confirmed to me during the week by Nick Sava, his trainer, that the dog will take his place in the Irish Laurels down in Cork. He will be trained by the Lower Shrewth. Also, kennel companion Tiny's Bud will join him. Speaking of Tiny's Bud, news of other derby finals, Troopy's Kewl. He sustained an injury in the final when finishing last, and he will be retired to stud. Also, cool performance, of course, the winner. It was very predictable that that dog was going to be retired to stud. And news of Late Late Show, his connections have decided to give the dog a month's break and hopefully he will race again this season. Well, following the semi-finals of the Puppy Derby on Friday night at Harold's Cross, Airport Express is my tip of the week. Despite a tricky trap three draw, the bitch should have enough pace to overcome it. Don't miss next week's Greyhound View where we feature the BCR Press Puppy Derby from Harold's Cross. A chance to see future stars in action.